trip behind the scenes with future country rock blues kings and queens discover them first with palm mash tv palm mash tv Well, hello everybody. It's Paul Mash TV time again. Thank you so much for joining us. Got another great interview coming up for you shortly. But if you haven't done so yet, click that subscribe button and the bell below you. And you're always going to get the latest uh, episodes when they become available. And leave a comment on the comment section. We'd love to hear from you there if you'd like. And uh, we're on Facebook, so go to facebook.com forward slash Paul Mash TV. And you can follow us there. Send us an inbox, comment on the things you see. And uh, we'd love to hear from you in email as well. It's palmashtv, all one word, at gmail.com. And if you're a band or a solo artist that want to be on the show, you can use that to uh, get information on how to do that. But if you're just simply a fan, you know, we can we love fan mail as well. So send a fan letter there, and uh, we'll get back to you when we can. And all this will be recapped at the closing credits at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. From Chicago, Illinois, we have Yachty Pimpin' today. Very awesome artist as usual, and uh, we're going to get to that in just a moment because it starts right now. Okay, here we are with interview time as promised, and with us from Chicago, Illinois, we have Yachty Pimpin. Thanks for joining us, Yachty. What's going on, baby? All good. <laughs> doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing all right. I'm doing okay. all right. Well, I'm glad that you made it here today. Uh, how did it all begin for you as far as being an artist coach? Because, you know, everybody has their own story. We'd love to hear yours. Well, well my story, I always, my family is based on mu uh, m musicians, you see what I'm saying, and instrumentalists. Mm -hmm. And they've been more towards gospel, you know what I'm saying. I'm more towards the Black Sheep side of the family, so I'm more towards what's the world. You see what I'm saying? It started back when I was modeling. I used to model for Levi James. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Somehow I was in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, doing a uh, fashion show. And the girls, they thought I was an artist. You see what I'm saying? So it was more attention from the girls. But at the time, I was I was doing poetry. I was writing poetry. And I started getting into the sync of, of what music that come from poetry which was, was built from harmony. You know what I'm saying? And uh, after a while, uh, I heard a song... Uh, Birds and the bees. Mm -hmm. I don't have the birds and the bees memorized. It, it just just clicked in. So all of a sudden I started drawing, and was crazy when, when I started writing music. I lost my ability to draw. I, I should draw. So it went from there. So um, back in the day when Pink House was around and uh, Chicago was really doing this, you know, this artist thing with the brat when uh, Twister used to be Mr. Tongue Twister and things like that. So I go out to these the venues to meet them, and my friends like go ahead and battle them. <laughs> so I was a shy cat then. So I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna battle up and get ate up. But at the same time, there was still gave, gave me exposure. Mm -hmm. So I started writing, started writing, and a friend of mine he used to ride, ride with the uh, with uh, what's the name of the uh, Rough Riders, it's called Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. So I had had a song called Fat P Fat Cat Player back then, right? My first song I recorded, and DMX liked it. So uh, I posted up with D DMX down down downtown in Chicago at uh, I forgot the name of this uh, big time uh, production where R. Kelly's went to Cheesecake not Cheesecake Fact. It was something, but anyway, uh, that didn't go through. My friend kind of stood me up, and uh, you know messed the opportunity up with me. So I took that like, no, nah, nobody would never get in my way again, forget third party, blah, 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 blah. So I start, I wrote a song called Pippin' from the Soul. And this is one of, the, one of my best songs I lost, but that song took me to another level. You see what I'm saying? I did a show and all of like, a few of Chicago producers start, you know what I'm saying? I guess I caught their interest, you know what I'm saying? So it started going from there, far as Chicago. So I started doing my thing, doing my thing, uh, started messing with the uh, radio programmers other than the radio host. You see what I'm saying? It was a chick named Lisa E. worked for 92.3. And uh, it started getting to her, then it started turning personal. She she wanted favors for, for her to do, you know what I'm saying, what I was looking for her to do. So I kind of turned that down because it wasn't, you know what I'm saying, I'm not going on that route. So I started messing with the DJ personalities 
and uh, Chablis is one of them. And uh, yeah, there we go. So I, I went to do a talent show with them and uh, they had me sitting there all night, bro. That's about two, three o'clock in the morning. So Shot Blizz came in and brought his crew and shut down the talent, shut down the, the showcase. So yeah, me and my younger staff got mad and I started housing shit. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what y'all is. Your artists suck. You're not doing it right for our network. And then you got me sitting here wasting my whole night away. And I got to be at work at 5 o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I kind of bagged away from Chicago. Because I see it wasn't no network. It was just capital. And it's been there for a period of while. You know what I'm saying? So I journeyed down to Atlanta. When I journeyed down to Atlanta, it was overnight success every time I stepped out and did it to this day. Mm. So that's, that's what got me started into the music. What got me started... As far as understanding the platforms, levels over artistry, you know, bring me to platinum, diamond, whatever, however, however they laid it to my supreme self. So, so with me, this music, I don't, I don't, I'm set aside in every artist I heard or every story I heard as far as artists get into the music business. Because it only money it took me, Paul, was put into the studio. Mm -hmm. Or I started doing my own, uh, uh, my own uh, inserts, my uh, album, you know, uh, record inserts, record covers and stuff like that. I, I do my own because I don't believe in the third party. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, things just took, takes off, takes off. Like I had, uh, and, and, and I stand up, the, the form, format of the industry, you know, audio and visual. Because some, some artists, majority of artists these days record a song, make a video, they think about the radio. Mm -hmm. it, it don't go that way. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's studio radio, then visuals. You see what I'm saying? Then showcases. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in my in my history of this, I'm, I'm to me, I'm set apart than uh, any other format or, or entity of, of music because I'm coming out of my pocket too much for marketing and promoting. The music promote itself. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, me being in Atlanta, I, I come across all the celebrities from music to movies. Uh, you know, been on celebrity movie sets, you know what I'm saying, things in that form. And just walking up to places, Paul, and come on in. Oh, okay. I, I take advantage of that. Walk up to the radio stations to get information. Oh, come on in. We're going to throw in your air. Oh, I ain't ready for that. But, yeah, I'm ready. You know, this is how things in, in, in my life as an artist go. You know what I'm saying? It's not paying pay payola. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in paying payola because I feel they need the artist or the producer to formulate their company or to keep their company running. So if anything, you need to be paying me other than me paying you. If any payment, you see what I'm saying? Uh, let's do the damn thing. You get you get more listeners, I get more followers. <laughs> and, and 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 that always be the case. Mm -hmm. You look out for me, I look out for you. Because without me, it won't be a you. Or us, it won't be a you. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I understand about the music. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, well that is a great story. And um, tell oh, me. it get deeper than that, baby. <laughs> well, well tell, tell us a little bit about some of the artists you grew up with that helped influence you. Well, it, it's only certain artists over the lifespan of my me being here. ain't that many. You know, back in the day, MJG, A Ball, Tupac, Biggie. You know, it's be a lot of you know uh, inspired artists that have pushed me. Now these days, I have Future, but Future, when I seen the video of him wor worshiping Satan, I'm like, nah, I ain't about that no more. You see what I'm saying? I can't represent a sin that be that might become my sin. You see what I'm saying? And I'm speaking as a man of the world, not a man of religion. You see what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So. Like the other artists I met, Usher, it was cool till he, you know, showed a certain face to my friends, so I had to check Usher. Uh, Ludacris, I performed with Ludacris 2013 at King Powell down in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, now the, the artists that influence me these days is if somebody come back that's that's old, okay? And I ain't gonna say old that bring music music because music this day is not music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's no information. It's, to me, it's all just based on destruction, ain't no information. You know what I'm saying? As far as it ain't even, they can't even call it gangster music. It is not gangster music because no organization, there's no foundation around it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what, what, what pushes me is me. Mm -hmm. 
because of the star I became. You see what I'm saying? And the thoughts that get in my head, you know, or or what I'm hearing, uh, on hearing like the underground artists to me have more value than what we hear on the radio these days. Mm-hmm. And in Chicago, they have uh, from nine to eleven, they have a, a playout set where they they uh, let you hear, you know, the artists interview or their music. Now being here. For the months I, you know, for a few months I've been here, those that that type of music was motivate me, but it motivate me to destroy it <laughs> because they, it's still that follow the leader, it's still that copycat. You see what I'm saying? Wow. It's it's not it's, to me it's it's not original. The producers are more original than the artists these days because it's just copycat. So the music I I bring is 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 worldly. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just what it is, how a man, when I'm in public hearing or speaking or whatever, I'm hearing people. You know what I'm saying? Hearing how to get tired of this music, R&B is, you know, love and it's just hate, you know, things like that, and which is true. Because what's underground, they won't bring up top because it's too much natural to it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, I, I know what you mean. And, and uh, what you just said on Usher, that, that's an artist I hadn't thought about in quite a while, but uh, I'm glad you got to meet him. And perform with them and stuff and uh uh i'm sure you can get all your stuff on streaming uh everywhere but uh tell us in a, in a word uh where you can find all your uh you know uh streaming stuff and also where you are on social media if you are uh well where i stream on now is uh is, is this uh platform called n and nancy one m is in mike dot com and it's more still like it's it's still like a popular base uh, form. It's, it don't consist of payola. When you when you get spins, you you earn Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? And that Bitcoin can be used to promote you within the sites. And and they connect it to all major platforms. And the reason I I, I start with platforms because when you you see you 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 explain the truth, they kind of hinder you or restrict your account. So, so, so I, I I bagged away from the platforms, and it really I bagged away from the platforms because of this, this big reset. You see what I'm saying? Everything's going to get reset, and that's why we explain to other artists, other businesses that what well, y'all copying off of has really been gone. It's no more until it's been reset, or we come together and build something more powerful. Mm. Oh. We're not raping because at the same time, without us, Paul. It won't beat on them. So when they capitalize on us, that's no fair profit. Mm, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because they're using us to build their foundation and not really helping us. They just keep taking from us. So I fall back to those platforms that really for the artists in just percentage for what they're doing so they can keep their thing running. Right. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and and I know you got some of your stuff on YouTube as well. So you have some of my stuff on YouTube. That's more. That's even like one point five percent of my stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying I used to, I used to use uh, SoundCloud. The SoundCloud started getting messy a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And they was they they started taking songs and all that because your accounts get messed up or you can't log into your account such such such. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of music lost on that also. And that's what, you know, banned me away from certain platforms. Like, hold on, I got my music on here now. Where is that? Without you inf- informing me. You see what I'm saying? Right. Okay. So how I see, you know, like, like I'll be talking in the groups when, and, you know, as far as Lucky, and I'll be telling them, you know, we can't look at everything as it was because it's different now. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? You got people who are looking for music, and we getting them trash. You get people looking for love songs. We getting them how to bust a window out because he cheated on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not music. That's not togetherness. That's not harmony. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you can find me on N1M. You can find me on YouTube. Uh, Facebook, I use a little bit because they got all my accounts restricted. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, 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 I'm speaking more into this awakening process that we are going through. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Okay. So... So, you know, then on top of that, I'm still Paul, I'm the only artist that I speak to today and get deals every day. And I can I can send you, I can copy you the emails they sent me. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Every day, Paul, I'm turning down 
offers. You know, taking them out of contract mind and putting them in promissory mind. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You don't. Yeah, I'm an entity, so we don't do contracts. We do promissory. <laughs> we can sign off that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that's that's. I'm speaking with Universal Studios. Uh, I, I turned down Atlantic. I turned down Atlantic Records. I turned down Def Jam. I turned down Interscope. Atlantic been after me for a while now. They took one of my producers. He was he was a close friend of mine. Took one of him, and he changed. So I see how how manipulating you know things can happen in this industry. So if I'm the artist and I feel like they a banking institution. <laughs> you're not part of my band. You was a banking institution, so that's why I use them for far as they want to throw me some money. Oh, you're a banking institution, not a label. I'm the business. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Universal Studios, they've been kind of seeing my idea with it. So they sent me an email uh, two days ago. They want to give me $40,000 front money and $200,000 single deal. Okay, which is cool. You see what I'm saying? Under, under, under stipulations that is on promissory, not contract. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All so right. they, and uh, I got an uh, offer from Making a Magazine to go out and do a show in, in LA next month for this new cat. And this new cat, like the other cats, they just, it's just a copycat. And the venue they throw on for them only hold 1500. Mm. You see, uh, 1500. Okay, well, um, you know, get out to those area. I mean, those streaming platforms and the YouTube and Facebook, so forth that he mentioned. I'm sure he'd love you for that. Um, uh, what is this song we're about to watch? Uh, tell us the story behind it. Uh, the story, the song you're ready to watch is more, it's more of a love song, really, and it's based on females I used to date, and I and they, it was pole sisters. They were strippers. Okay. But some of them be so real, Paul, and, and they don't just be there just, you know, saying, doing what they're doing. Some of them do have plans in life. And the, the song is really based on love other than club music. Mm -hmm. But so I, so I combined the both and came out, ooh, we. You know what I'm saying? Now you wake up, you see your girlfriend dressed a certain way, you're like, oh, we. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's based on love, but in a twist of club. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? And then keeping it direct, straight formality, how females like to be, again, talk to section. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what brought up that song. And that track was made by a fella named DJ, uh, uh, DJ Dodger. He over in, uh, in France. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he has sent me the track out of uh, hundreds of tracks he sent me. And he sent me that track one day, and Paul, it all just came together, and boom, bam. And when I did the show, the show was done by DJ Infamous in Atlanta. He's a, a, a high-profile uh, uh, high DJ on the radio stations down there. Mm -hmm. Also, you know what I'm saying, the City Girls, he did a song, The City Girls, and all that. So I had an opportunity to perform for them, but at the same time, I dissed him mm. because he treated me like a, a regular artist. Or oh, hold on, wait till I get through E. No, you're inviting me down to this music, talking E. I can't wait. I got to be at work. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Oh, you is at work. I said, no, no, no. That's my job for my kids. This job here is for me. Kids first. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. So after, after that, he had uh, reached out to me. Like I said, the song he did with City Girls, he wanted me to feature. But at the same time, I had to rush back to Chicago because my mom ended up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's what formulated that song. All right. Well, we're going to watch that in just a second. But uh, thanks for, so much, Howdy Penn, for being on the show today. Uh, well, we love, we love you to uh, come back out again a second time if you'd like to. <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. Well, here it is, and it starts right now. Take my man. 
Yeah. <laughs>